A context-free grammar is four-tuple, where v is a finite set of non-terminal symbols called variables, sigma is a finite set of terminal symbols, s in our set is the start symbol, p is a finite set of grammar rules, which we also call productions, which take a variable and rewrite it as some combination of variables and terminal symbols, and we say that L of G is a context-free language generated by the context-free grammar G if the language consists of strings that can be produced by the production rules. Intuitively, a context-free grammar provides deconstruction steps. If the deconstruction steps lead to a string, then the string produced is an element of the language. For example, suppose we have a context-free grammar where our variables are s, a, and b, and our terminal symbols are the empty symbol 0 and 1, and suppose we have grammar rules. So can we decide whether something is part of the language? So the idea is we'll let our start symbol be the string that we're trying to produce, and if we can deconstruct this all the way down to a string of symbols with no variables, then we have something that's in the language. So we see that our start symbol is not the empty string 0 or 1, so we can't use this production rule. However, our start symbol is a 1 followed by a string, And so we have a production rule that says our string can become one followed by a string, and this will be our first step. And to keep track of everything, we'll note below that in our production of 1b, b is the string 0, 1, 0, 1. But if b is this string, we note that our production rules for b include the possibility that it's 0 followed by a string. And so b, which is 0, 1, 0, 1, is 0 followed by a string. And so we can use the production rule b produces 0a. So this is our next step. And again, we'll record that if we do this, a is the remaining portion, 1, 0, 1. Now, since a is 1, 0, 1, our production rules for a allow us to replace it with the empty string 0 or 1, but we don't want to do that. But we can also replace it by 1 followed by a string, which gives us our next step, where s is 0, 1. So again, s is not the empty string 0 or 1, but it is 0 followed by a string, and that's one of our production rules. And so that gives us the next step, where a is 1. And then finally, our production rules do allow us to replace a with 1, and so that's our last step. And so our start symbol has been replaced successively until we have a string of just our terminal symbols, which completes our deconstruction. And again, if we don't care about the intervening steps, we can just write this as s produces the string, and since the string is made up of our terminal symbols only, then it is in our language. On the other hand, if we try to produce something like this, we can start with the production rule 0 followed by a string, where a is the remaining part. Then a can produce 1 followed by a string. Then s can produce 1 followed by another string, then b can produce 0 followed by a string, then a can produce, um, well, actually there's no production of a that is 0 followed by a string, and so we can't go any further and we can't complete our deconstruction sequence. We're stuck at this point with the variable a, and so our original string is not in the language. 